Hey everyone, it's April 1st, 2020 at 9.01 a.m. And I wanted to make this video um, just kind of not only to share my story, but because this is almost like a time capsule into the state of the world right now because things are so messy. Um, basically, in a sentence, we are going through um, the COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, worldwide outbreak. Um, me personally, I live in uh, one of the boroughs of New York City, which at this point, uh, probably two weeks ago, they named uh, this the epicenter in um, the United States. So things are pretty ugly here. Things are not good in the world. I think I don't know. I mean, definitely the the number, the reported number of cases by the CDC is in the six digits, um, and the death toll is reported to only be in five, so like you know, like twenty nine thousand people, um, and that's just that's not accurate. So I want to share what's going on with me and how this has directly affected me. So long story short, uh, I do have COVID-19. Um, I was diagnosed at this point five days ago. Um, and yeah, let's give a little context of how I con contra contracted, uh, contracted this fatal virus that luckily I'm okay. Let me start off by saying that like, I'm okay. I'm not gonna die. But, uh, so I, st I got a new job back, um, my first day was on February 20th, which was, like, such a big deal because I haven't worked in nine years due to my mental health. And I work at a wholesale club, which basically just means it's one of those gigantic stores, um, like Sam's Club, Costco, BJ's other stuff but like something like that just like these behemoth stores where like people pay like a hundred dollars a year to buy things in bulk that's basically what it is it's a store where you buy things in bulk and so yeah I started working on the 20th and America still wasn't really like taking the virus seriously and uh, yeah definitely just people weren't affected in America yet so Suffice it to say, people didn't really care. Um, so if we fast forward, um, on March 13th is, I, girl, I don't know what happened. I'm referring to it as like, kind of like the wake up of the apocalypse because the series of events and how fast things in the world, like in a, the world and America escalated and like people's response to it, I just feel like exploded. Um, so I was there for like two weeks and then I go into work one day, I have a 10 o'clock shift, it was that day, right? Yeah, I had a 10 o'clock shift and I got there at about nine, 45 and we open at 9 a.m. and our uh, shelves are like five, at least 30 feet long um, so they're gigantic shelves and um, my plan is to upload some videos into this assuming I don't talk too long um, but yeah, our, our shelves are gigantic and I went in and I noticed that there was no toilet paper uh, Or maybe I don't remember that maybe there wasn't a lot. I, I'm, I'm getting two specific days confused I'm getting the Saturday the Friday and the Saturday confused But here's what happened on Friday March 13th. This is when people came to the apocalypse revelation and just decided pretty much hoarding everything and panic buying because by the time I got there and started my shift at 10, I wish I was joking when I said that there were people in line that had been there for three hours as in they didn't get to the front of the line to check out until like after 12 p.m. <laughs> I'm 
muevan, muevan. Um, and my job that day and what continued to be my job for the two weeks that I was there until I actually got sick um, was I was in charge of delineating the line for 15 items or less or people that have more than that. Um, so all of my job had to deal with being squished between a line, you know, me walking through a very slim aisle and like yelling um, in English and Spanish for, you know, people to, to separate. And yeah, like over the whole course of me working there, we were never given any protective masks. We did eventually all start wearing uh, gloves, but no one was ever given a mask. Uh, it certainly didn't seem like you needed one in the beginning, but as time kind of progressed, it was like, maybe you should have one. So actually by my second shift, I was able to ask a woman uh, if she had an extra one and she didn't speak any English because I live in an area, I mean, I live in fucking New York, like who, who speaks English here, you know? But I live in a, in a area where there's a lot of um, people that speak Spanish. So she didn't speak English, but she gave me a mask, thank God. And this is one of two masks that I was able to require or acquire by customers at my store that I am really grateful for. But, you know, I caught it anyway. So. Um, but yeah, so there's like a, a picture of me putting on the mask. And then there's a video of me saying that I didn't know what I was doing because I just I didn't know how to wear it. Y'all, I don't know how to wear this mask. I don't know what I'm doing. The lady that gave it to me told me to pinch this. This is what's going on. It's not busy at all. It's only 12.46 and I'm here until 7. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that was the 13th. There was three hour lines and it was nuts because my shift was six hours and the line didn't stop. It was continual, like thousands of people came throughout our store and that was the reality of every single day that I worked there. Some days were worse than others. Um, that 13th, Friday, Friday the 13th was by far the worst day and one of the most dramatic things I've ever seen in my life. Um, and then over the weeks, like it kind of ebbed and flowed, but like our job was still um, to like, make lines for people because my actual job is to do food demos on the floor. Um, so I'm that person that's like giving you samples of Oreos or kombucha or something. But within my company, we all technically like got laid off because we can't be serving food when this is going on. So we were um, kind of just contracted to work in the actual store. So that's why I was basically the airline person and telling people where to go. So because of the virus and the nature of our job of us like handing out food and like touching people, our company has canceled us for two weeks. So for two weeks, we're technically like out of a job, but because I work like in a store, um, my manager was like, if you just like wanna work at the store, that's cool, it's up to you. And I was like, yeah, I need money, but uh, so yep, my job got canceled, and I have no idea what I'm doing today. Am I making cakes? Am I restocking Gatorade? I don't know. So now we can fast forward to um, when things started getting dramatic in New York, like the 13th is when our store got hit of like, okay, something's going on. So this will go down in history. The next day that I went to work, there's no toilet paper and there's no toilet paper, no, no paper towel left. That's the thing that is like, I swear to God will be in history books because that people have gone insane. You were not able to find paper towel or toilet paper for like two weeks. I mean, literally empty shelves everywhere. 
we were not able to keep up or have it in stock and it was just insanity news articles were written about it i mean it was on it was on the news because people were just fucking panic buying toilet paper i don't know it's just that's a part of our culture so um so then i was like okay this is getting serious i am going to have to continue to work in this you know high risk environment I'm gonna try and need to find some protection and you know it won't hurt to buy some stuff so I live with my girlfriend and so I want to read the list of things so on March 18th is uh, when I decided to you can't see that you still can't I'm gonna stop <laughs> is when I made a list of all of the things that I started to buy so these are these are the lucky things that I just happened to buy before shit hit the fan. So I was able to buy my contacts, which clearly I'm not wearing now because I look like a fool. Um, but I was able to buy my contacts and after I bought them, because um, I needed them for work, I was running out. Uh, but after I bought them, literally two days later, the company like shut down and was like, sorry, we're not doing contacts anymore. Um, because at this point, like on April 1st, um, we uh, around the world are um, enforcing social distancing as well as all businesses except for um, essential businesses are closed. So the only things that are open right now are pharmacies. For some reason, liquor stores are open in New York. I say people are just getting drunk and watching the world burn. That must be happening. Um, so grocery stores, liquor stores, pharmacies. Um... Uh, and that's it. And then all restaurants are only uh, takeout or delivery. People are not allowed to eat in restaurants anymore. And then everything else is literally closed. So I happened to buy my contacts two days before the company closed. I got very lucky. I happened to buy a 72 mega roll of toilet paper that cost $26. And just as like a reference point, Two weeks later, paper towel, a 12 pack, uh, pack of paper towel at my store was selling for $34.99. Uh, I bought 80 water bottles for only $6 because I, like, I needed them around the house. Um, just because, like, sometimes I just need water bottles. Um, I bought 26 sun-kissed sodas. Um... Uh, and so yeah, those are the things that I happened to buy before everything just disappeared. And also, yes, water shortages statewide. You couldn't find water, bottled water anywhere. So that was, that was nuts. So this is by March 18th. I had a day with my girlfriend where we literally just went everywhere. We went into every mom and pop pharmacy that was small and like you couldn't see trying to find gloves um and like we found one pair price gouging it was twelve dollars but we spent an entire day I want to say like four hours trying to find supplies also hand sanitizer so that couldn't be found so the things that like were out of stock and still are really hand sanitizer face masks toilet paper slash paper towel um uh, Lysol wipes, uh, Clorox wipes, Lysol spray. Um, those are all of the things that like, and then food wise, rice uh, was out of stock, oil was out of stock. Um, you know, a lot of canned food was gone. Um, just stores like honestly empty, like really like zombie land looking stuff so these are the things that we were able to buy i found two things of lysol wipes but i had to wait 16 days i finally just received them yesterday um because amazon just basically shut down and they're only sending out essential supplies and everything is out of stock everywhere um 
Uh, we had to buy reusable grocery bags that were $18 because New York uh, on March 1st um, got rid of plastic bags. So we needed reusable bags. Um, we found a 50 count box of vinyl gloves, three hand soaps. Then as far as food, um, so I'm a vegetarian and I just like, I don't eat a whole lot anyway. So these are the things that I decided to buy. I got seven cans of refried beans, um, two cans of corn, uh, tortilla chips for nachos, flour tortillas for burritos. I found two body washes and um, I was able to get like a six pack of Irish Spring soap for my girlfriend. Um, we found baby wipes that we were using for a little bit to sanitize our phone. Uh, we were able to find napkins. Um, we had found two paper towels. Um, I bought some more refried beans. There was four for five dollars of elbow pasta. I bought two six packs of applesauce, seven Gatorade. Um, I happened to have two black boxes of Kleenex. I bought a big thing of coffee. I bought three boxes of instant rice, three dry containers of almond milk, um, and uh, I luckily was able to fill all of my, my meds that I needed. Um, and then I got $20 in quarters for laundry. So that's what, that's what was going on. That's the shopping that I had to do. Um, but finding the wipes online is just the most ridiculous thing because you still can't find them. And finding Lysol spray also is impossible. But my luck on that is after days and days and days and days of searching, somehow by a fluke on Walmart, I, 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 I found two bottles that comes in a two pack of Lysol. Uh, and then when I clicked checkout, it was gone. It was sold out literally in a matter of a minute. So then I, I created a Walmart account and put in my credit information. So if I saw it again, I could just buy it right away. And luckily the next morning I was up at like seven and I was able to buy a Lysol bottle. So I have this, I have two of these. It's uh, Jasmine and Rain Scent. So that I think was maybe $10. Um, and then finally yesterday I was able to get what I find most valuable was um, a two pack of Lysol wipes. There's 80 of them. Um, because another thing that's going on in the way that we have to live our life these days is um, every time we come home, we would have to do a thorough wipe down. So we would have to take off our shoes. We would wipe down our phones with wipes. Um, we would spray with the two bottles of Lysol spray that I already had. Um, we would spray the doorknobs, we'd spray the light switches, and then we had to wash our hands and then spray down uh, the faucet handles. Um, so yeah, just, yeah. And then, yeah, eventually wearing gloves uh, everywhere we went. So we can fast forward now to when I got sick, which, so now it is, it's Wednesday. Um, last Tuesday is when I got really sick. Technically on Monday, uh, the 24th, um, at 6.30, I started developing like a little bit of a cough, a little bit of phlegm, and just for prosperity purposes, so the future, we could know what symptoms there are. The big symptoms are of this are a cough, which usually leads to um, potentially respiratory failure, which is why a lot of people are dying, um, a high fever, um, why am I forgetting? Those are the two main ones. Basically flu-like symptoms minus the like shortness of breath and not being able to breathe. My mind is just scrambled because there's just so much going on in the world, but those are the main things is like a flu, and trouble breathing uh, and then eventually we found out that diarrhea was a symptom and then way later like literally a week ago uh, was discovered that loss of taste and smell were also symptoms 
So yeah, I started developing like a minor cough, but I was like, okay, this is something to take note of because at this point I had been working at the store, like I said, with no mask for uh, 15 days. And then on Tuesday the 14th is when it actually hit me and it was clear that I had it. Um, it's basically just a rundown of the days and how everything went. On Tuesday, I did not have a fever all day. I was 97.6, so normal temperature, um, but it was like something I had never experienced uh, in the sense that I could not stay warm. I've had a fever plenty of times in my life. Like, I've been alive on this earth. I've had fevers. I've had fevers where one minute I'm extremely cold and then I'm sweating, like ripping off blankets. The way I describe it is I had like a chill in my bones. The coldness was in my bones. I had a sweatshirt, sweatpants, gloves, a hat, um, and then three blankets on me. And I was trying to sleep because that was another thing is I was extremely tired. At one day I ended up sleeping for 25 hours. Um, and that was probably my first symptom, honestly, of just being extremely fatigued. I would come home from work and sleep for like 15 hours. But... I couldn't get warm and I had a space heater that was like maybe two feet tall pointed right at me it was 75 degrees and I still I was just so cold and honestly that's the scariest thing that I can say like looking back at this is how somehow my body was unable to regulate heat then the following day on Wednesdays when I developed a fever. It didn't get too out of hand. It was like 100 degrees, so very low grade. Um, and then I think, yeah, I think I slept 25 hours that day. That was Wednesday. Then on Thursday, I had a little bit of a cough, but my fever went away. Um, let me double check my notes, because I like thoroughly documented everything just to know how my symptoms were. Um, so Friday was a pretty good day. My fever was gone. Um, and then on Saturday around 5 p.m., the symptom, this is the only symptom that still stuck around, is I lost my sense of taste and smell. And I realized that because I was in the shower and I was like washing my body with my body wash and I was like, I don't smell anything. And I happened to have, uh, my girlfriend has grapefruit body wash and I like opened the bottle and put some on my fingers and like shoved it up to my nose and I couldn't smell anything. And so that's been four days of me not being able to taste or smell anything, which, like, let me make this clear. People are dying. People are dying horrific deaths from this. It's This is being called a pandemic. This is horrible. Uh, the economy is a mess. People are dying. Millions upon millions of people have lost their jobs. Um, the world is a mess. And I'm very lucky that my symptoms seem to have cleared up pretty quickly, but Honestly, something that I am struggling with is the loss of taste. I don't have any appetite. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not hungry at all. And then, I mean, I can't taste anything. So, like, I just, I don't care. So, that's that's been really difficult. I... So, fun fact about not having taste buds is you can get the gross, low-sugar Gatorade because it's healthier and you can't taste how disgusting it is. So... Mmm, nothingness. I had a breakdown about it yesterday. But uh, a highlight was I was able to taste soy sauce two days ago. I don't know why. That's like the only thing I've really been able to taste is I had soy sauce with rice. And that was such a victory in my life. Oh 
my god. It's so sharp. It's it's like angry. It's I don't know how it's it's like it's there. It's it's salty. It's it's prominent. It's not one hundred percent, but I would say it's a good eighty. It's 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 yep. So, um, yeah, this video is hella long, but again, this is history, so here we are. Um, so yeah, at this point, uh, I am quarantined for 14 days because that's the thing. If you get sick, you're quarantined and you have to stay away from everyone. Uh, my girlfriend and I have been living in separate rooms for the last week. I've been in the bedroom and she's been in the living room. I'm not going to move over my camera, but her uh, air bed is over there. Um, that's how we've been living our life. Every time I left the bedroom, I would be wearing gloves. We would be spraying everything down. But because my symptoms have calmed down, my doctor told me that like it's our discretion on how we wanted to deal with me being in proximity to her. Because Because there's, you know, a 98% chance that she has it. She just happens to be asymptomatic. Um, and I'm not just saying that. Like, my doctor has uh, said that as well. Um, because the thing about this is a lot of people, the reason this is spread so quickly is people don't know that they have it. Um, they may have it for two days and then uh, not know it. And then in those two days have spread it too. A lot of people so yeah the big buzzwords of this day and age are social distancing self-isolation which just means staying in your house there's the six feet rule uh, which means you stay six feet away from people you can only be in groups of two people um, everything in New York closes after 8 p.m. and you are only allowed to leave the house um, if you are going to get medical supplies or food um, and yeah, I mean, just every website, Walmart, Amazon, CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens are just like completely sold out of essentials. And there's been a lot of debate about whether or not people should be wearing medical masks because another thing that's been going on with this pandemic is medical providers, especially in New York, are running out of PPE, which stands for personal protective equipment. So that involves gloves and masks. Um, and we like have had a shortage of a shortage of that uh, so there's just been a lot of debate about whether or not people should be wearing masks and finally like literally as of yesterday the CDC is starting to say it hasn't put it forth yet and I checked before I made this video that there's a very good chance that America is going to have to have like a law put in place that we're all gonna have to wear masks which are impossible to find I've I've literally spent hours, I spent two hours straight the other day looking for masks in addition to all of the other days because I need to protect myself at work because I'm very lucky that I still have job security because I work at an essential place. I work at a grocery store. Um, so that's it. It? 20, 20 minutes later. But yeah, like I said, I wanted to share my story and just kind of give a piece of history because shit's really fucked right now. That's, I mean, there's no, there's no cute way to say it. Things are really, really bad. It's scary. Like I said, so many people have lost their jobs. The unemployment lines are jammed. People can't get through. People have families that they need to support. Um, but the only good thing is is that some credit card companies are being lenient with people and like helping them maybe extend paying a payment for like a month um because so many people just lost money and you know a lot of people aren't able to pay rent 
today on April 1st because, you know, they got their last paycheck a week or two weeks ago. So that's what's going on. Um, let's see. This is long, but I'm going to include some videos anyway, um, just for posterity's sake. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you are safe. I hope your family is safe. I hope everyone you know is safe and healthy. Um, because these are just really uncertain times and yeah, it's scary. It's scary to say that I have this and that I survived it. And it's just crazy to think, I think the most mind boggling thing is like the shortage of supplies has been just the weirdest thing to me is just like apocalyptic stores and not being able to find toilet paper, not being able to find Lysol spray. <coughs> it's just crazy. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you for watching. Um, and I didn't introduce myself. It's the end. Who knows if you're still watching, but my name is Rylan. Thank you for watching. And like I said, stay safe.